Hey guys, it's God Bars here, the self-proclaimed hip-hop historian, and this is the 101st episode of my series where I grab a vinyl from my collection, talk about why I love it, what influence it had, and what its place is in the grand scheme of hip-hop. Today we're talking about a legend whose main claim to fame isn't necessarily his voice as much as it is his inhuman flow. Of course I'm talking about E-40, who's pretty much the only Bay Area rapper who can be mentioned in the same breath as Too Short besides maybe Mac Dre. While there's MCs and acts from Oakland, I'd probably put above those guys in my personal favorites list, like Spice One, Del the Funky Homo Sapien, Souls of Mischief, or the wider Hieroglyphics camp. Nobody, including those legends, would deny the massive impact someone like Too Short had on the game. However, E-40 has put on for his hometown just as long, and while his role in putting Bay Area hip-hop on the map may not have been quite as large as Too Short, he was still a massive pioneer that's impossible to forget when discussing this subgenre and time period. You can hear the influence sonically in all sorts of modern acts today, where guys like Shoreline Mafia, SOBRBE, and All Black use the same flavor of bouncy, funky instrumentals, just with a current twist. Forty has even worked with many of these younger guys and given them his stamp of approval, which you can tell he's doing because he believes in them. It isn't clout chasing or something because he honestly doesn't really even get his due credit for giving a helping hand to the newer generation and passing them the torch instead of hiding it. E-40 is a rare select case where despite being in the game for over 30 years now and not having too many current hit songs, he's still a figure everyone knows and respects as an alien MC. His flow is held up longer than anyone else's by a mile. There's nobody else in the genre who came out so ahead of the curve that their style can keep people on the edge of their seat from the early 90s all the way into the 2020s. There were more than enough advanced and skilled rappers from his era in the Bay who debuted around the same time. They even had their fair share of groundbreaking MCs delivering at a higher level than their contemporaries. But I don't really think anyone was doing the type of lyrical acrobatics 40 came out performing on his very first LP. You'd also be pretty hard pressed to find anyone in hip hop period who had such an undeniable influence on slang. He has a myriad of terms with outreach that stretched much further than just the bay, just a couple being Sprinkle Me, Smell Me, and Captain save -a though I'm pretty sure there's literal guides and even dictionaries dedicated to 40's unique vernacular. I'm pretty sure he was even the first rapper to use Chopper in a song, or at least one of them. The only full LP I know to come from him prior to In A Major Way is his 1993 debut Federal, though I believe he was active in the late 80s as it was around 86 or 87 that he formed his tightly knit crew The Click, though I don't think they'd adapted that name yet. This was actually a group completely consisting of relatives of E-40 to my knowledge, like his cousin B. Legit, his brother D-Shot, and his sister Sugar T. He helped show the world that just because you came from the hood and didn't have all the opportunities someone else may have been privileged with, that doesn't mean you can't be a walking dictionary. But 40 is much more than just a respected hip-hop figure with an extensive vocabulary, as there's hundreds of MCs you can find that fit that mold. Where E-40 sets himself apart is with his alien encyclopedic knowledge of references in terms of phrase, and of course his idiosyncratic delivery and flow that's pretty much impossible to replicate or even bite. He was also in a central part of Tupac's transition from a background dancer for Digital Underground to the gangster rapper that would take the world by storm and make Death Row a worldwide name. Puck was around a lot of these Bay Area MCs at the start of the decade, and dudes like E-40, Boots Riley, and Sibo were definitely huge influences on him in multiple ways. He actually has a feature on 40's second solo album here on the insanely hard posse cut Dusted in Disgusted, along with fellow West Coast legends Spice One and Mac Mall. Spice absolutely demolishes his parts on this track, showing that even with 40's inhuman opening verse, he had no intention of being left in the dust. 
Everybody plays their part on that all-time classic song, though, and they all do an extremely admirable job of matching the speed and feel of the LP while still being true to themselves and not changing up their respective styles. That's another aspect of his long-spanning career that he still keeps up with to this day, as just a couple years ago he was one-fourth of the Mount Westmore supergroup that dropped an LP, which actually consisted of 40, Too Short, Snoop Dogg, and Ice Cube. There happens to be a nice little chunk of other guest appearances on In A Major Way, including Levity, Selly Cell, Max Sean, Be Legit, Sugar T, as well as Droop E, who I believe is E-40's son. On the production side, while he had a large hand in the instrumentals as well, there were a number of producers and DJs that lent their talents, like Studio Ton, Mike Mosley, Funk Daddy, Kevin Gardner, Sam Bostic, and Redwine. I'm going to leave out the killer skits for honorable mentions as usual, and the songs I am going to shout out would have to be To Bumble, Sideways, Sprinkle Me, One Love, Day Ain't No, Fed, H-I-double-L, -L, and It's All Bad. My three favorite tracks from this classic would have to be Spittin', Smoke and Drink, and Dusted and Disgusted. Thank you for watching my 101st video. Next time we're going over to the Big Apple to discuss one of the most underrated rapper producers in the game. So check in for that one. And if you enjoyed, be sure to like, subscribe, and let me know what your favorite songs off of this Bay Area staple are. Don't forget to have a great day, and I'll see you next time, okay? All right.